Good morning and welcome to TaylorMade, where every day is an opportunity to bring fashion and style into your life. I'm your host, Brian Rada, and we're here on EmpowerMe.tv, where today we're giving you more style points than we've ever given you before. First up, Miami, art, basil. Yes, it's true. All eyes on the art world this week are featured at Art Basil in Miami Beach where Vogue.com has given us an amazing guide to both all of the provocative and interesting pieces you can see there. First up, we have amazing Brazilian art. The Brazil Art Fair, featured at brazilartfair.com, is on hand near the Wynwood District. It will have over 100 artists showing with 15 art and design galleries. And the fair is being positioned as an introduction to the country's culture at large. I love this green and blue piece here on the left. It's absolutely stunning and I would put that in my home in a heartbeat. Well, moving up north a little bit, you can also check out um, amazing Los Angeles-based sculptor Thomas Hausago. The Los Angeles-based sculptor has been gaining more and more attention for his monumental figural works. Their primitive roughness grabs your attention and their timeless artistry holds it. This is his striding figure, Rome One, which came out this year, and it is on display at the Art Basel in Miami Beach's Art Public. For me, this piece looks like Man on the Moon meets Caveman. It's a perfect combination of both modern and classic. Absolutely love it. Well, you also can maybe be seeing double as tastemaker and New York-based dealer Dominique Levy is hosting a mini exhibition called Seeing Double at the main fair this week, matching up two living masters, John Baldessari and Jeff Koons. Both men have a way of presenting the kitschiest parts of our art culture and forcing us to look at them with fresh eyes. Here we see uh, Jeff Koons pale from 1986. Absolutely adore it. And of course, no Art Basel would be complete without um, the art dealing legend Jeffrey Deitch. He used to be, the, he's the former curator of the Los Angeles Museum of Contemporary Art, and he's back curating Wynwood Walls, the outdoor street art gallery that he co-founded with real estate entrepreneur Tony Goldman in 2009. Jeffrey Deitch is especially known for championing muralist, and this year's no exception. Um, he's rounded his focus on women graffiti artists from all over the world, Aiko, Miss Vaughn, Fafi, Maya Hayuk, and Lady Pink may not be household names yet, but Deitch and his co-curator Jessica Goldman Strebnik want to make sure visitors get an appreciation of their groundbreaking painting. And to round out this conversation at Art Basel, we can't talk about art without looking at some mid-century furniture. These are some amazing pieces. Um, with, these are designs a reliable source of inspiration throughout the ages for collectors, and dealers oblige them this year by showing some choice examples um, at Design Miami. The great Charlotte Periand is represented by a 1966 bookcase that is almost like a Mondrian grid come to life at the gallery downtown. Uh, Francois Lavonfort and Jean Royer uh, by an artist sideboard with blue opaline glass revealed by a fanciful curving cut in the wood at the Gallery Jacques Lacoste. Both offer solid proof here why we're still beguiled by the mid-century modern art form. I would put both of those pieces in my house. I think they're absolutely stunning. And um, if you are lucky enough to be in Miami, be sure to check out all of those uh, wonderful pieces at the art fair. Well, if you're not in Miami this week, chances are you're wearing a pair of these. That's right, rain boots. <laughs> Sing it with me, shall ya? I'm singing in the rain, just singing in the rain. Come on, sing it with me. You, you want to sing, don't you? Rain boots always get me singing. And we've assembled some of uh, amazing collection here. You know, rain boots are not what they used to be, truly. They have actually transformed in a complete way um, from, it, you know, going from your a garden, everyday garden variety to something a lot more magnificent. Well, and for me, they really represent the true connection of having both style and function. Everyone from both Hilary Duff 
and Rachel Bilson are sporting rain boots these days. And some of the hottest brands include Scottish brand Hunter or French brand Aguilé. They have become staples for the discerning fashionistas who want both the form and the function. Well, if a nice pair of Hunters or Aguilés are not in your budget, they will cost you around $100 to $200. We've found a few nice items on catalog classics for at least half the price. Here we have a nice leopard animal print rain boot. This is a realistic animal print that will take you for a walk on the wild side indeed. Rain boots have a rubber up a rubber upper with contrast buckle accent, soft fabric lining, and cushioned insoles and non-skid tread. This goes for about $22.98 at catalogclassics.com. And my favorite pair of this bunch, which is also a steal, these are wellies. You'll stride confidently through any day in these bad boys. These are colorful cowboy style boots. They are waterproof from the pointed toe to the pull tabs, see those right at the top there. And the boots have rubber uppers, soft fabric linings, and fashioning insoles. These go for $45, and you can find them at thecatalogclassics.com. Well, I would gander, even if you're not singing on your way to work in rain boots, you still want to check out a pair of those, because you can wear them even when the sun is shining and still look fashionable. Well, you know, speaking of singing, <laughs> You may be singing when you're decorating your house for the holidays. And just simply because you're gonna spruce up your home doesn't mean you have to spruce it up with things that you can't use all year round. We've come up with a nice list of five items here that must have to make your house more festive and pretty. And unlike those bridesmaids dresses that you only wear once, you really can keep these around all year. Here we have a nice West Elm candle. This goes for $49.50. It sets the mood with these with flameless. These are flameless candles here. I can't tell you how many times I've left my house with a candle burning. And so I think a nice flameless candle still gives you the mood you're looking for uh, while also being very safe. And this retails for $49.50. You can also go to row, look at row dolls for these traditional garland pieces. This is a fuzzy wool garland and I think after you take it off the Christmas tree you could use it as a table runner um, you know or you could perhaps hang it on your coat rack um, just as a nice accent piece um, and I love a, a, a few hanging balls year-round are never a bad idea we can go back to West Elm where you'll find a lovely lovely decanter I think a decanter really classes up any any space whether you live in an apartment or a home this rich red decanter will look stunning at your table all year long and you can find it for $249 at West Elm. And of course, silver and gold are not something that you only have to keep for December. This is a nice sparkly pie cutter, uh, silver pie cutter for 20. You can find that at Juche. And this is my favorite piece, which I think is really fun. This is an urban outfitter tree, very Charlie Brown, lots of colors. It's made of war, uh, you know, yarn and wool, and it retails for 50. But once you take all the Christmas um, ornaments off of it, why not keep it around and hang jewelry on it? I think you can stick this, you know, in your boudoir, um, you know, in your bedroom somewhere, or even in your living room um, by the door and hang some jewelry on it and grab it on your way out. Okay. Well, obviously, um, you know, another item that people like to wear year round, especially for the gentlemen, are ties. And we can't talk about ties without talking about the Hermes tie. It, with its introduction in 1949, the Hermes silk necktie has set the standard. It is a staple of CEOs, politicians, and royalty. After bags and scarves, the cravat is the biggest uh, seller at Hermes. Last year, they netted profits of $958 million. And um, based upon Women's Wear Daily, where we found some of this information, that's going to count for about 10% of those sales are going to come from the cravats and the men's ties that they're selling. Well, so let's take a closer look at how a Hermes, Hermes men's tie is made. The company weaves, engraves, and prints its ties at middle-sized workshops known as ateliers in Lyon, which is the longtime hub of the French silk 
trade. Here we see the beautiful picture featured here um, you know, it, it, with the weaving station going on. The design process takes about six months, six to eight months, and requiring more than 2,000 hours of work for especially elaborate patterns. The assembly stage for the ties takes another six months after that. Giant rolls of silk um, are imported from the company's farm in the countries of Brazil. They're spread across 50 meter tables. Artisans mix each color into the tie, applying it meticulously in an effort to find the right pattern. Look at some of these beautiful patterns here, and look at her just putting all of the color right onto the, the printmaking machine there. On the surface, the Hermes tie is made just like any other. The pattern is traced, the material is cut, and the pieces are sewn together to make the tie. The creation process gives the Hermes tie its unusual ability to withstand years, decades even, of wear and tear. Recent innovations to their ties include they are making them a little bit thicker, and um, the latest collections reference the digital age, which I think is really fascinating. The ties feature keyboards, microchips, and USB sticks. The USB tie even contains a small pocket for storing a flash drive. This season, the theme is the sporting life, with designs featuring kite surfers and boomerangs. Currently, a tie from Hermes will cost you around $195 US. There you go. So what if you're on a more conscious budget and can't necessarily fi uh, find the money in your bank account to sport a Hermes tie? Well, there's a fabulous website called thetiebar.com where you can find a few other options. First we have here, this is a nice textile dots Dwayne Wade tie. It is a handmade 100% woven silk as well and retails for 25. I love a good bow tie, I love polka dots and silk is really the way to go here and a baby blue is perfection. Absolutely favorite. You can buy me that for Christmas if you want. I'll give you my email address at the end of the show. The Scottish plaid tie here is also fun. Whatever your descent, you can wear this tie proudly. This is a, a Scot Scottish inspired tie. It's plaid in green, red, midnight navy, yellow and cream. It's a soft flannel cotton and made um, 100% for 15 dollars as well. And the final piece we have here, I obviously love Paisley. These are Rose Garden Black. They branch out from solids um, and tie in something floral as well. The Azalea Silk woven into a rich black satin background um, in this Rose Garden tie will cost you 15 well, I love a good paisley. The tie I'm wearing today is actually from the Why Not Boutique in Washington, D.C. I got a real steal on this when I was visiting a friend there. Um, I think it's really fun to mix purples and blues and really pop some color um, in your statement piece of a tie. That is all the time we have here on TaylorMade. Thank you so much for joining us today. We'll be here back tomorrow morning at 10 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. Until then, be fashionable and keep styling. For more TaylorMade, visit us on EmpowerMe.tv, Dailymotion, and YouTube. You can also follow us on Twitter and Instagram and like us on Facebook. Until soon, stay fashionable.